So funny start to the trip, uh, we are in the middle of setting up camp, right there. She's right there. <laughs> and just found an entire Afani Esther Fulvo colony. You want to you wanna grab, right her, grab her before you lose her? I mean, it's not like she's particularly fast, but... <laughs> but yeah, look at this. Her entire colony was just under a little tiny old piece of firewood. So, so far we've basically just been setting up camp that that arrangement right there um most people wouldn't really think of illinois as being like a good state for ants and they'd be right in some ways but the species density here is really in, like pretty crazy um just through setting up camp i've seen like three of Aster species four campanota species um unfortunately everyone is joined by the non-native tetramorium immigrants which is kind of a problem but as we move away from sort of this human disturbed areas and into more natural areas, we should start seeing those kind of fade out and replaced by native species, which is awesome. Um, but I'm not going to spoil, unless I did already in the title and thumbnail, what we're here looking for. Um, but it's exciting. There's some good stuff in this here, this here forest, so keep watching. So there, there has not been a Campanotus flight probably for, I don't know, two or three days, maybe a little bit longer, but that doesn't mean we can't find them. Uh, breaking into rotting logs, peeling bark and whatnot is working. And uh, we've got two species, Campanotus pennsylvanicus, the classic, as well as Campanotus chromates, which have a little bit more red. Uh, so we're going to get these queens tubed up. Don't worry, this is a very temporary collecting setup. Pretty cool. So, only a couple minutes in, and we have already found our target species. This right here is uh, Trachymermex septentrionalis, the northern fungus farming ant. Um, and they really do live up to the name northern here, as this is debatably the northernmost population of this species. Um, and here's just a little side nest entrance, but they actually have this colossal mound. And they're really active. These guys are starting to dig out a large chamber underground to grow their fungus in, now that the weather is warming up here in central Illinois. Very cool. I still just think it's super cool that Illinois of all places has leaf cutting ants. I mean, look at the range of all fungus growing ants. We are way up here, all the way at the tippy top. Now, these aren't true leaf cutter ants, as they'll eat a lot of frass and dried plant material. However, it was really not hard for us to find them having cut fresh plant material. And honestly, that's leafcutter ant enough to me. These are attractive little ants. Probably my favorite in the state of Illinois. Uh, even though I am quite partial to fungus farmers, so you shouldn't really be surprised. Yeah, so it seems like uh, my kind of assumption that Campanotus may fly tonight could be coming true. There is, in fact, a Chromates elate. It's pretty cool. Hopefully we see more of these, and uh, the elates, of course, would be nice. As it starts to get a little darker, we've got the very uh, charismatic Campanotus castaneus. Very bright orange, which is kind of atypical for Campanotus, and pretty cool. So as it gets darker, we should start seeing more of these, but got a nice, decent-sized worker here. Very cool. Very cool. So this afternoon, we kind of just, you know, walked around. We looked at some Trachymermex, which was uh, very nice to see. Uh, and we did pull some Campanotus queens... Uh, out of a log, or out of a, a couple of logs, which I showed you. Um, but then I was thinking, you know, it's really humid, there's no wind, it's hot. Maybe Campanotus will fly tonight. And we're starting to see Campanotus castaneus with male and queen elates posted up, which, uh, I don't know about you, but it sounds like to me that they are probably going to fly. As for the other species, um, Pennsylvanicus and Chromates, not quite as sure, because clearly they've already had at least some flights, but I'm hoping that they'll have uh, some more flights, because they fly more than once typically so uh, if all goes well we should be pulling out some Campanotus queens here in maybe an hour or two. There we go our first Campanotus castanese delate. How cool is that? 
So there's just a bird in the middle of the road at night. Uh, I don't know what little bro's doing. He doesn't seem to care about me at all. He doesn't look too hot. I'm not gonna lie. You okay, bud? I don't know what the heck is going on with this dude. But I don't know enough about birds to assess. I'm just looking for Camping Otis Queens. Have you seen any? Okay, for the record, the bird is fine. I think he's just a little baby that doesn't know how to fly. So I'll put him up on a branch. And I think he should be good. Hopefully. Good luck, little bro. That night, despite a decent flight happening, we only managed to find two D8 Castaneus Queens. Of course, I'm not too sad about it, considering that I'm not the one keeping them. For the second and final day of the trip, we headed to a nearby sand prairie. This open prairie habitat should have a bit different species than the forest we were in the day before. So we've kind of just arrived to our new spot. We've already got not one, but two. Tracky Mermex colony is just right here at the entrance. And yeah, probably more. Uh, this one is huge. Look at that hole. That's crazy. So I figure I've been filming a lot of Tracky Mermex and Campanotis and things like that. But I want to showcase, now that I found an actual nest, uh, some Aphanogaster tridae. It's a huge Aphanogaster species that's pretty prevalent in sandy areas in the Midwest. Uh, and I really like them. They got a dead formica worker there that they must have picked off at some point. But yeah, these are a really awesome ant. Uh, one of the one of my favorites. So I figured I'd take a moment to show them off to you guys. Well, I dug randomly into the sand pit. There was a what looked like maybe a laceous nest entrance on top, and all I found was Solenopsis molesta, which definitely is just pure coincidence. But uh, hey, that's interesting. So, even though it's not sunny, which is normally more conducive to them, we're still finding at least a velvet ant. And this is a pretty cool one. She's very bright orange and pretty big. So, definitely won't be complaining about that. Wingless wasp running around in the sand? Can't complain at all. Here's kind of an interesting one. Unfortunately, they're not coming very far out of the nest, but uh, this is Nylanderia arena vega which is just a pretty yellow nyland area, ground nesting. Sand loving is the name. Kind of makes sense, I'm sure you can tell. Uh, and I'm kind of partial to this species because I actually hold, as far as I'm aware at least, still the northernmost record for this species in southern Wisconsin. Of course, we're farther south than that, but this is still pretty far north for this species, so pretty cool stuff. But this, this is way too cool. They are cutting a prickly pear flower like very very aggressively which is super cool because i mean a lot of people will kind of argue that these don't really take fresh plant material to that i say uh you're wrong <laughs> get a load of this so these may not have the the same reputation as leaf cutter ants like true leaf cutter ants but they're ants that cut leaves and plants man illinois leaf cutter ants so, so cool. So, we have once again been successful in finding our day's target. Uh, this here is Dorymermix burini. They're a uh, pyramid ant species that uh, find their northernmost range extent here. At least northernmost known. Uh, and they're, they're cool. They're very common in the southeastern United States, but uh, not up here. And they've got nice orange coloration, pretty active, and overall really nothing to complain about. So we've been seeing these parasitic formica all over the place and we finally found out that they're nesting in these dead grass clumps which is really cool. These are an awesome group of ants that I'm very stoked about finding. Yeah they're they're unhappy. I'm sure you guys can see this swarming behavior. <laughs> They are not happy that we found out where they live. <laughs> the last thing that I had to do on this trip was collect some Temnothorax Texanus colonies for a colleague at ASU. Once I was done with that, it was time to head home. Well, 
not quite home just yet. The next leg of this trip will find me in the great state of Wisconsin, where we found some crazy stuff. That video is coming out a week from now, so you absolutely will not want to miss it. For now though, that's all I've got. Thank you so very much for watching, and have a good one.